Today we're replacing a split heat pump. We're going from a three ton to a two ton. I'm gonna show you how not to oversize equipment. And we're also gonna be looking at the SEER 2 equipment. We're installing the new SEER 2 equipment, which is apparently two stage. I have not installed equipment like this yet, so I'll be familiarizing myself with it and also hopefully helping you to learn more about it. This unit right here has a bad compressor. It's about 12 years old. And I'm gonna show you why the compressor failed early because this compressor would have lasted longer if it would have had the right duct system on it. So I'm gonna be showing you that. Hope you're ready to learn. You're watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad, well, let's get started. What are you doing, Darren? What are you doing? Uh, I don't really know, man. <laughs> Anything I'm you wanna enlighten us with? <laughs> you need your medication. I need my medication, man. <laughs> All right, so it's a three ton unit. Just wanna show you the existing unit here. 410A, and we're gonna be replacing this outdoor unit with a new one. I'll show you the equipment here in a minute. Here's the duct system. You can see the supply comes up, goes into a T, which we're gonna measure the duct here in a moment. And there's the air handler. And it is a three ton, 36,000 BTU. So it's only about 12 years old. I'm going to show you why it's failed. So down there, it looks like we got a 14 by 14 or a 16 by 16 return. So all the supply vents are six inch. We've got one here, one there. That's two, right? Okay. We got one here. That's three, four, and then there's one more, five. So there's five, six inch vents. Okay. And that's it. Now, there are two more vents, which were closed. I opened them, and they're four by 10 ceiling vents mounted on the supply. So there's one more that makes six, and then seven. So total vents are seven, okay? But these, are, these have actually been closed. I opened one up. So really, we only had one, two, three, four, five. We only had five vents that were open and that is not enough for a three ton. We need 12 six inch vents for a three ton. Now we got one more, which I didn't count. And this vent right here goes to a bypass humidifier. It looks fairly new. It's American standard. I don't know if it's being used. I don't know if it works. I'll probably check it out before we leave. I also want to show you something else I found because after I came and diagnosed the compressor was failed, I tried to get some auxiliary heat for the customer, but look, somebody actually took out one of the heaters. You see that? And then they left the wire right there. So they didn't actually have a enough heat kit to provide even emergency heat. So I got a price on a, on a heat kit, which is about 200 bucks, and I got a price on a compressor, and together it was about 2,500 bucks, so almost $3,000. So you never know what you're gonna find on jobs. Here's the new outdoor unit, and it says SEER 2, and it says YH2E24. So it's a two ton, Pretty small copper coil, that's nice. Filter dryer right here, that's nice also. So it's much easier to replace a filter dryer that's on the outside of the condenser rather than inside. Now, I'll show you the indoor air handler. It's a JHE-TB24, okay? So there's the air handler. Very important, we got the installation manual for the outdoor unit and the indoor unit. Super important, we'll be looking at this later. Now, I'm gonna show you why we're installing a two-ton. Duculator, tape measure. Duculator, tape measure, I'm gonna measure the duct work. All right, so this is the supply trunk leaving the air handler. I want you to see this. Okay, eight, mm -hmm. 
by 20. Okay, main supply trunk. All right, we'll check that on the duculator. Eight by 20. See that? Eight by 20. Come over here, 14 inch. 0.05, the totals will be about 650 CFM. So if the main supply trunk can only carry 650 CFM, it's not gonna carry 1200 CFM. So that three ton unit was starving for air. And then both of these supply trunks that are splitting off to the sides, eight, thank you, sir. Eight by 15. We got half inch liner in there. So we're gonna subtract from that. Okay, and we're gonna line the rectangular duct dimensions up to what we need, eight by 15, right? Okay, there's eight by 15. See that, eight by 15? Let's see what it says for CFM. 0.05 is what we're going by. 0.05, we're looking at, what, in between 400 and 500 CFM? Two tons rated for 800, three tons rated for 1200. And then I said, what, on the eight by, that's eight by 15. Yeah, so each duck will carry, what, 400 CFM, just about 450 CFM. So we would need each duck to carry 600 CFM for three ton. We got half inch liner in there too, so. Really, it'll come out to about 400 CFM per ton. Static pressure was super high. I'm gonna put in a two ton unit because we need to talk about square footage too. I measured the square footage. This house is 25 by 30. That's 750 square foot. We, ha we have all of our vents upstairs. They're not conditioning the basement. So we don't need a three ton. We need a two ton. 800 CFM will uh, condition about 1200 square foot. So. We're gonna be in good shape. This house is 30 foot long and 25 foot wide. 25 times 30 will give us the square footage and that is 750 square foot. That's what we're conditioning and we only have five vents in that area. So five supply vents, that's it. Let me show you the return and the supply vents. All the vents are four by 12, so four by 12 registers. We got one there, one over there underneath the couch. That's two vents. Then we've got three for the bedroom, another bedroom four, another at uh, the bathroom, that's five. So five total supply vents, 20 by 20 return, that's 400 square inches. Here's our thermostat. And we got a Y, we don't have. We gotta make sure we count the thermostat wires so we know how many we need and how many we have. So that's what I'm gonna do next. So it looks like we've got a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We got seven, oh, eight. We got eight wires. So we need to make sure that's enough wires. Okay, because we're installing a two-stage unit this was single stage. Got the panel off the outdoor unit, and this is where our thermostat wires come into this board. You can see we've got eight wires. So we need eight thermostat wires coming to the outdoor unit. You can see them right here. See unit installation instructions for low voltage terminations. So we'll look at that in a moment. So we've got 10 thermostat wires coming to the outdoor unit. So we got plenty here. Here's a thermostat we're using, T6 Pro, and it's two heat, two cool, conventional, three heat, two cool heat pump, and that's what we've got. Here's the heat kit. We're installing 10KW for this heat pump, and I like how they use a contactor. That is nice. So there's where the heat kit will be installed. We'll take these four screws out, take this plate off, and then install the heat kit there. Looks like we've got a fancy motor. Okay. We've got seven wires to hook up for the heat pump and then we've got two for the heater kit. So 
So here is the installation manual for the outdoor unit. On page 30, we've got a standard ECM air handler, standard multi-stage heat pump. We've got eight wires for the thermostat. We've got seven wires for the air handler, and we've got eight wires for the outdoor unit. So take a moment, pause the video. This is how we're gonna wire it. This is the installation manual for the air handler. And we got the same wiring diagram right here, figure 25. The return that's right below the air handler is 16 by 16, but it looks like it's cut off a little bit. So it's probably only like 12 by 16. So we definitely got more than enough return for this two ton. And I'm probably gonna open up the vents for downstairs in the basement. Don't you love these? I just found something that I know for sure has caused this equipment to fail. Look at this. Let me know what you think about this in the comments. You see this pan right here? They put this pan underneath, I guess to keep the unit from leaking in the floor, but there's no float switch, no way to kick it off. But look at this. Can you tell me how this equipment is supposed to pull through that piece of metal? It can't. Wow, I am, I am just, I can't believe that. I mean, how do you miss that on install? I, I can't believe this equipment has lasted this long. Let me know in the comments what you think about that. That's unbelievable. We're definitely removing that. So glad I'm not putting a three ton split heat pump back in this home, back on this duct system. And I explained to the homeowner that I didn't have a lot of faith in putting a new compressor in this unit because of the duct size. And I explained to them that the duct was way undersized and that the unit was oversized for the home and that they would have a much better uh, performance and efficiency if they went with a new two ton split heat pump. So there's a new outdoor unit. We just set it and I'm going to come back a little bit later and I'm going to use my anometer and I'm going to do some airflow checks. So if you want to learn more about how to figure out what the CFM is using an anometer, checking the feet per minute on the return, then stay tuned. So there's the outdoor unit. Look how small it is compared to the old one. So what were you saying, Darren, about that? The unit being blocked off, air, no air. Yep, burn her up. Burn her up. You wasted a lot of money. That is pathetic. They ought to be ashamed of themselves. That's right. Tell them, Darren. I am. I feel sorry for the homeowner. I'll be back. That's what they all say. They never come back. <laughs> so there is a drain hooked to the pan. So now... Once the drain's cut, we can pull it out. Yeah, they got the drains in the bottom. It's wow. Oh. Well, this was creative. Smart, boy. Give him boys a raise. <laughs> yeah, give him a raise, man. Good job, guys. Ah, uh, somebody was lost. There you go. There it is, folks. There it is. One of the main reasons this equipment has never worked the way it should. Little spare pieces. Hey, it'll actually be there this time. Yeah, so let's let's see if we can see that coil now. Can we see it? Oh, there it is. <laughs> oh. Always ask questions. I asked the homeowner. What's your experience with this unit so far? Has it heated and cooled the home? And they explained that yes, it's heated and cooled the home. They did mention that during the heating operation, they felt like it never really blew warm air. So I bet you it was definitely lacking in performance due to the installation issues that you can see obviously. Glad that they went with my recommendation and I'm glad that they asked, what would you do? But you need to remember that if it was me, this is what I would do, and that's what you need to say. You need to give your recommendation and let them know that you are concerned, you do care, you do want them to have a good experience, because that's what it's all about. That's what makes your life less stressful. You giving them the right 
uh, recommendation and making sure that the job, whether it's a new compressor or it's a new install, that it's going to work and they're going to be happy and you're not going to have callbacks and issues and it's going to be a constant headache for you. So, also, Manual J. I want to talk about Manual J. So, I've done hundreds of houses just like this, same footprint, ceiling has pretty good insulation and I look at the way that it faces, whether it's north or south, I look at the square footage, and I did not do a manual J. I did not do a load calculation. Do I have to? No, I don't have to. And I'm not going to because I've done 100, 200, 300 houses like this. Does that mean you don't have to do a manual J? No, you can do a manual J. It's always good to have a manual J, a load calculation. Why? Because say you have a dual fuel and you want to try to save as much energy as possible, so you want to figure out what the balance point is. If you don't know what a balance point is, I am going to do a video about balance point and I will drop that video down in the link in the description very soon. Uh, balance point is where the load of the structure at a certain temperature meets the capacity or load of the equipment and that's where you want to switch over to your auxiliary heat. So with a dual fuel, you'd want to uh, have your balance point so that you know exactly when that load of the structure is going to exceed the capacity of the equipment because that's when you're going to switch from your heat pump to your gas if it's dual fuel. Now this, we're not, we don't have a dual fuel, it's just split heat pump, so our auxiliary heat is electric heat strips. But having a load calculation can help you to fill out a balance point chart and then figure out exactly when you need to program that thermostat to switch from the uh, first source of heat to the second source of heat, which is your auxiliary heat. So, Back on site, equipment looks really nice. It's about to be started up. We're gonna go through and check the CFM and check the BTU per hour. I'm gonna show you how to do that. But before I do that, I'm gonna show you what I do to make sure we have the low voltage wiring correct. I take and I write the color thermostat wire that I use for each terminal. I start at the outdoor unit. I just wrote all that down and now I'm gonna to go to the air handler and then the thermostat. This is the best way for me to be able to wire this correctly. Eventually, after doing it over and over and over, you, you won't have to do this and you'll know exactly um, what you need to do based off of having experience. So, but this is a good way to start. Just wanna show you how we do it. Okay, so it's wired up. We're ready to start it, and we've got our fan speeds right here. We're going to look at this chart real quick. We've got our call for our fan on one. We've got our stage one for cooling on the two terminal. Uh, we've got our stage two for cooling on the four terminal, and then we've got our call for heating on the five terminal. So if we look here, we got B24C. That's our model number. So we're looking at this blower speed and then here's our external static pressure. So we should have around 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So for the call for cooling, which is on terminal number two, if we go over 0.5, we should have 425 CFM. And that is not gonna be enough. We want around 800 but that is for the first stage. So that's for right there. So we got our second stage is terminal four. So terminal four, scroll over at 0 0.5, we should have 825 CFM. That's more like it. So we may have to adjust the fan speed to get the right CFM. And that's how you do it. You look at this chart, you use a magnahelic, you measure the return and the supply static. If you don't know how to do that, there's actually a, a picture and there's some information in the install manual I'll show you. So using the install manual, you can see here's a picture using a magnahelic, measuring the supply and the return static. If you wanna pause the video and read over this, air system adjustment, Take a moment, pause the video, read this right here. This will give you more information. So I moved the call for fan up from one to two and the call for the first stage cooling 
from two to three. That way I have a little bit better CFM. But we'll know as soon as we use the anometer and check the return and figure out what the average feet per minute is, which I'll show you that. Two stage compressor solenoid. Looks like we got MC2 and M2 on the board that go to that solenoid that energizes the second stage of that scroll compressor. And you can see there's the harness and on the other side there's that solenoid. We got two blue wires going to it. Okay. So it's 73 in the house. Got it set for 61. Okay. Okay. Supplier temp is 44. So 73 and 53 would be a 20 degree split. 73 and almost 43. Look at that. We got a 30 degree split in our temperature. Let's go see if we're in stage one or stage two of cooling. But that is unbelievable. Definitely, probably. But we got good airflow. Wow. I'm going to check all the other vents. We've almost got a 30 degree temperature split. So we're going to check and see if it's in second stage. So we're going to check from the C to the Y2. So that's from the blue wire to the yellow and red striped wire. So blue and yellow. Let's check with our meter. Volts AC. All right, so we got our meter leads from C to Y2. Can you see that uh, meter right there? It says 26.4. So we are in second stage. Low side pressure is 115, it looks like. High side pressure is 200. 48 degrees on our suction line temperature. So 48 minus around saturations around 37. So it's about 10 degrees of superheat. That's really nice. Brought the house temperature down two degrees already. We're gonna switch it to heating now. And I'm going to test just the heat pump by taking the black and or the white wire off so I don't energize the heater kit. So auxiliary heat wire has been removed. Now place the thermostat back on the wall, put it on heat, and turn it up. We'll test it out. This is a balance point chart. If you don't know anything about this and you want to learn, you want me to do a video on this, let me know. I will do a video on this. This is what we're going to be using today to figure out the CFM. And we're going to be using this formula here to get the CFM. And then we're also going to be using this formula here to get the BTU per hour. I'm doing this for the heating operation. So take a moment, pause the video if you want, but I'm going to walk you through this. If you want to know how to charge a heat pump in the heating mode, I've got a video. I'll put that down in the link in the description. If you don't know how to use superheat and subcooling to charge equipment, I've got a video on that. I'll drop that down in the link in the description as well. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, smash that bell, ding, so you know what I'm doing. Now I'm going to briefly explain how I'm going to figure out what the CFM is by figuring out the feet per minute. So you go to each return grill that you've got. If you've got one return grill, then what you're going to do is you're going to take your anometer and you're going to take an average of 16 to 20 readings. So say we take 16 readings across that return grill. Then we're going to take and add those readings together and then we're going to divide it by the number of readings that we took. So if we have 16 readings, we add all the readings together, whether it's 300, 400, 300, whatever it is, add them all together and divide it by that number, 16. That's going to give us average feet per minute. Also, on some meters, you're able to actually select a mode where it says average and you can go along the grill for a certain amount of seconds and it'll give you an average feet per minute. We've got two grills, so we got to add up the average feet per minute, figure it out, and then we add those two grill readings together. So I'll show you what that turns out uh, to be, and then we will take the next step to get the CFM, which I'll show you that here in a moment. So you remember where it was blocked off? Now it's not blocked off anymore. I'm going to start with this 16 by 16. Take and turn the anometer on. 
and I'm going to do this. Reading here, about 425. Reading here, about 430. Reading here, so you get what I'm doing here? So I'm going to go and I'm going to measure 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And then I'm going to add all those together. I'm going to go do the 20 by 20 after I get done with this one. Now we're going to measure the average feet per minute on the grill upstairs, 20 by 20. Do the same thing. Now I'm going to show you how to do this. So I got 465 on the 16 by 16 grill. It's pulling a lot more out of that grill that comes right out of the bottom of that air handler than it is the one upstairs. So I only got 150 out of the one upstairs. So I may need to block off this return downstairs so they can have more air pulled from the upstairs return. And it'll also make my readings better. So this is what we got. 465 for average feet per minute on the... Uh, downstairs return and then 150 barely anything on the upstairs return so how do we figure out the CFM we take our first grill we take the average feet per minute okay which is 465 we times that by, by 0.75 and then we times that by 16 times 16 then we divide it by 144 and that'll equal the CFM we do the same thing for the other grill 150 times 0.75 times 20 times 20 divided by 144. Our total CFM looks like it is about 900, right? 932. And our unit is supposed to push about 800 CFM, okay? So 932 to me, I think I need to block off this return downstairs so I can pull more from upstairs. And also, I think that the fan speed needs to be lower, but we'll find out whenever we check the temperature split. Let's do that now so we can find out the BTU. It is 71 upstairs. 88 degrees coming out of the grill. It is blowing really hard, so yeah. We could lower this fan speed and we could definitely get a better temperature split because 91 and 71 would be 20 degrees. We're three degrees lower than that. So we've got a 17 degree temperature split between return and supply. So we could definitely make some adjustments to the airflow and gain a better temperature split. Okay, let's, uh, let's check it out. So 17 degree split. So now we take the supply air temp and the return air temp and we subtract it to get the temperature difference which is 17, and then we take the CFM, which is 932, times 1.1 times the temperature difference to get the BTU. BTU per hour right now for this 24,000 BTU unit is 17,428. So what do I need to do? I need to adjust the airflow to make this number do what I want. If you have this information, if you know how to use an anometer and how to use a dual induct psychrometer to check temperature, and you have these formulas, you are going to be more professional. You can be able to do a good job. So our low side pressure for heating is 125. High side pressure is about 290. And our hot gas vapor line temperature is 140, 140 degrees. Wow. Okay. Now remember I talked about lowering the fan speed for the heating mode? All these vents should blow between 400 and 700 feet per minute. Look at what they're blowing. Wow, way too much, 1500 feet per minute. That's unbelievable, that's way too much. Let's see what this one's doing. I mean, look at that. In between four to 700. So I need to lower the fan speed definitely for the heating operation. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you learned something. I definitely learned something with the installation of this equipment, with what we found. I am reminded that not all companies care about the installation, care about the longevity and performance of the equipment, care about the customer and their happiness. And you can tell when I pulled out that pan that was blocking the return I don't even see how this unit was working for this long. How did it last 10 years? I don't understand. But let me know in the comments what you think about this. 
I hope you also learned how important it is to take readings in the field, like feet per minute, figuring out what your airflow is on all your vents, on your return. For me, the return should never pull more than 500 feet per minute, and it should never pull less than about 300 feet per minute. I like to keep it in between that range. But taking readings is so important. Why? I don't have any competition. There's not a lot of companies out there that are doing commissioning processes like this. They're taking their readings, they know exactly what the CFM is, and if they sell a three ton unit that's 36,000 BTU, that's rated for 1200 CFM, if they've only got 800 CFM by measuring their feet per minute and doing that formula, then they know, hey, I need more airflow. But if you're not taking readings, how do you know? And then you get your temperature difference. You got the dual induct psychrometer. You get the temperature split between the supply and return. And then you put that CFM together with the temperature split. 1.1, you get your BTU per hour. So if that 36,000 BTU unit that you installed is only putting out 10,000 BTUs or 20,000 BTUs, then you know you can make adjustments, then you can retake your readings, you can compare and go, hey, I did this, and that's what made my BTU what it needs to be. And then you let your customer know, and they're super happy, why? Because they're dealing with somebody who's intelligent. They're dealing with somebody who's intelligent, they know you're a professional, they know you know what you're doing, they've never seen somebody else come to their house and take these readings and do a good job like you've done, and you create such a happy customer, and also, you're a professional, so you know how to do this, and it sets you apart from your competition, and you don't have any competition. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and smash that bell, ding, so you know what I'm doing. If you've got questions, remember, questions can become content. If you don't have questions, that's okay. Let me know who you are, and let me know where you're from. You've been watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad, and I'll keep you cool if you let me.